Good afternoon, everyone, Creator Mom. So, today I want to talk about narcissistic abuse by a parent. And what I want to say is that I think it's weird, like, accepting the fact that you had a narcissistic parent. I think that, um, the reason I think it feels weird is because <clears throat> you hear all the back chatter of like people, I don't know, accusing you of being like, um, oh, big deal. You had an, a bad parent or a narcissistic parent, like, wow, well, wow, well, you know, like get over it type of thing. There is a, uh, <clears throat> there's some type of like get over it mentality. Um, in our world, I think, I noticed that, um, it's kind of surrounding that Me Too movement, like, a lot of people don't really like it, and they're kind of just like, well, so what? I was raped. I was molested. Like, who cares? Come on, get over it, you know? Like, you know, like that. So I kind of feel like that about, um, having a narcissistic parent. It's like, in a way, so many people have had narcissistic parents. And our narcissistic parents themselves probably also had, may have had a narcissistic or otherwise abusive parent. So, and <clears throat> I think the main reason why it's kind of like hard to accept it is because we see our parents as good you know what I mean like and that's how I feel at least like you see their struggle you see that reasons why they might be the way they are and you think they are not probably intentionally doing this but I don't know. Maybe they are. You know what I mean? Maybe they're not as good as you thought they were. And to think that somebody... I don't know. To think that a parent intentionally did this to you is hard to accept. You know? It's hard to come to terms with because it's like, no, no, they, they wouldn't want to do that. But when they continue to act in those same ways, when you're an adult, I think then you really begin to realize that, man, this person, and, and maybe it's not that they want to make you feel like shit, but like this book I'm reading is saying they want to rid themselves of the feeling of worthlessness by putting it onto you. That is how they feel relief in this life. So there's a section here that says, how apologizing protects the scapegoat. Once a narcissistic parent has cast the child as the receptacle for their own worthlessness, and no one else offers the child protection because everyone puts up with the narcissist's bullshit. No one really calls them out on it. The child learns that being wrong is a condition for feeling connected. That line right there really made me go, hmm. That, you know, feeling wrong is a condition for feeling connected. And I thought, maybe... Could that be a reason why so many people have such a problem with saying sorry all the time? Sorry. Oh, sorry. Saying sorry when there's nothing even to even really be sorry about. Like, this is one thing that we pointed out in the jujitsu class that I'm taking. It's just like, no, you don't have, stop saying sorry. Like, it's okay, right? But it's just kind of like ingrained in us. Like, oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry for existing. Somebody commented on one of my other videos that I took too long, you know, to get to the point. Oh, sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. 
that I took too long to get to my point. Oh, you poor thing. Like, I don't understand people who make these dumbass comments. It's like, I didn't claim to be a wonderful communicator and like, I'm going to get to my point fast in the video. I don't make videos for that. I just make videos for relatability and people who just want to listen. I listen to videos that I want to listen to. If I feel like somebody is being long-winded and they're boring me and I don't want to listen to them and I'm waiting for them to get to the point, guess what I do? I take my little fingies and I click off the video and I move along with my little life. I don't comment under the video. You took too long to get to the point. But people have to project, you know? And then they'll say, well, like, it was constructive criticism or some bullshit. It's like, no. You just have to feel like you have to get your shit out of you and put it, lay it somewhere else is what I sense that people people do. Um, let's see here. Being wrong is what happens when they try to engage with others or the world. It is a matter of when, not if, they anger or disappoint someone else feeling deserving of that reaction and must offer an apology. The apology often results in a diminishment in the intensity of the attack and felt shame, guilt, and self-loathing, and the scapegoat is often that the scapegoat is often left with. This reminds me um when I was at the shelter, there was one lady there who you could tell like that she was there to take advantage of whoever she could, right? Her presence was, I don't know, it was kind of dark. Anyways, <clears throat> so I was watching the interaction between her and this other girl and this other girl is used to being taken advantage of. She's used to being traumatized. And um, she's used to being treated like shit, probably. <clears throat> and uh, so the domineering one comes over and is like, and she's really rude too. Like she doesn't have respect for nobody, no one. Not even the people that ran the shelter. So, and this is a grown-ass woman, too. Probably over her 40s, you know, way into her 40s or something. It's just embarrassing how people that are older like this act this way. I'm just like, do you not see yourself? Do, do you not want to be, like, a kind person? Like, I don't understand. Anyways, so she goes, like, in a rude type of way, like, you gotta give me a cigarette, you got a cigarette or something like that, or a lighter, I don't know, I think it was a lighter, but it was, like, the way she asked this person was just, like, so rude, you know, and, uh, the person goes, oh, yeah, I have a lighter, and then I guess it was, um, and she goes, nah, like, fuck that, I don't want that lighter, that's, like, a crackhead lighter or something, I don't know if, if that's a thing, it, it I think that's what she called it, a crackhead lighter. <laughs> so the other girl goes, fuck you, you know? And then the domineering one goes, uh-uh, don't be talking to me like that. You're like, I'll fuck you up. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, wow. And then quickly, the girl became submissive. She was like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry or something like that. And there was another girl who was standing there who looked at the one like, why did you just say, why did you just say fuck you to her like that? Like, why, you know, and I was, and I'm there observing it. And I'm like, she didn't do anything wrong. Like, I understand why she said fuck you. Because the domineering chick came over here like she owns shit. You know, she just talks to everyone like shit. Anyways. It's hard. It's it's just that, I don't know, I guess some people don't really know how to guard themselves from these predators. They're used to these predators. 
they're used to, I don't know, complying with predators. These female predators, you know? Anyways. I don't understand it. Even though, like... I don't understand it to that extent. And maybe it's because her upbringing was worse than mine. Which it was. Um... You know, mine was just more uh, psychological, you know. But I cannot say that I wasn't provided for. You know, I cannot make that claim. Some people were narcissistically abused and neglected and shit, you know. But that's why I always gave my mother the benefit of the doubt because it was like, I was always provided for, you know, and she always made that known. Like, there was always food on the table. She would oh, always close on my back. She was late all the time. That was pretty bad. Like, when you're going to school, you cannot be late every day. And, like, she could not, you know, I would be late. Like, almost every day. So, um, so, Yeah. I was never physically abused by my parent, you know. I was never, uh, you know, neglected, you know, from the things, basic things that people need in life, like food, clothing, water. Um, I was provided for amply in those ways. But see, don't get it twisted. Just because you were provided for doesn't mean you didn't experience, you know, a narcissistic person. You know, Daniel Mackler's father freaking paid his way through college. I cannot imagine the amount of kind of obligation I would feel if my mother paid my way through college. That would be rough. Um, and they'll make you feel that obligation too. But thankfully, she always pushed me to, uh, she would always say, you got to get a scholarship because I can't afford your college, you know. So... Um, yeah, the apology often results in, a, okay, I read that. First and foremost, the narcissistic parent needs to feel right. I've, that was, that's my life right there. That is my damn life. The narcissistic parent always needs to feel right. Being right for the narcissist gives their very fragile sense of self, self-worth a boost, albeit temporarily. When there is not another parent willing to stand up for the scapegoat child, it is in that child's best interest to keep the narcissistic parent feeling right. What better way to do this than to offer an apology for whatever complaint the parent has? One of the most dangerous scenarios for the scapegoat, excuse me, like moving the phone, is when they take some type of action and the narcissistic abuser characterizes that action as having rightfully caused their anger and contempt. They argue that the scapegoat's behavior was disrespectful. Yes, <laughs> this is this is my life here. I'm just like, oh my God, this is so accurate. It's crazy. Hurtful, that the scapegoat was disrespectful, hurtful, and deceptive. Um, I've been called disrespectful and hurtful for sure. For the scapegoat, this means that something that emanated from their self is being held up as the reason for the narcissistic abuser's vicious attack. This can feel very threatening to the child's core self. Sorry, there was like a noise in my closet. I was like, what? Um, having an apology at the ready can feel like a much needed take back where the scapegoat can rebuke themselves doing what they did and often reduce the intensity of the narcissist's attack, right? It's that, because it's that narcissistic rage that we're always avoiding. And I don't even, now for some people, maybe the narcissistic rage is scary because maybe they, the, the narcissist will kill them or something. But like, I was never going to be killed. It's just like, what is so awful about the narcissistic rage? You know, I could not understand it because I think this is just like, 
subconscious shit, just like underlying stuff, like the inner child stuff that you're just like, my adult mind cannot comprehend why I'm scared to upset this person, why I'm scared to speak my mind. It does not make sense. It is not very adult. And condemnation can come to play too because you're like, what's wrong with me? I'm so weak. I can't even speak my opinion in front of this person because I'm afraid of making them mad. And then, you know, that kind of carries into other relationships too. Like it just said, like being wrong, you know, is the basis for connection or feeling wrong. What did it say again? Being wrong is what happens. No, it says the child learns that being wrong is a condition for feeling connected. All right, this video is getting long. I'm going to end it here.